Smash DLC, we all know, has been pretty weird. And now it just keeps getting weirder and weirder and weirder. So let's talk about that. I, don't know, I just kind of wanted to give some of my uh, dumb thoughts on the DLC overall and what patterns we can look at to kind of speculate who could be the next two characters. These characters may even become the final characters to be in Smash Ultimate or maybe the Smash Bros. series as a whole. So first up, we gotta look at if there are some potential themes going on here. Fighter Pass 1 kind of had that going on with its whole theme of new worlds and icons. Well, new worlds minus ones that were already in like Mario and Fire Emblem because yeah, we, we definitely needed more from them. But still, we got the Persona universe, we got the Banjo-Kazooie universe, we got the Dragon Quest universe, we got the Fatal Fury universe, plus a bunch of other SNK series. So yeah, very different from what we see now, because of all the series that got characters so far in Fire Pass 2, only one of them was not in Smash until now. But Fire Pass 1 also had this theme of icons going on. Things like Piranha Plants, who's not only iconic to Mario, but just iconic in general, in gaming. I mean, everyone knows the first few levels of Mario, so anyone who's familiar with them will be able to recognize this plant. Dragon Quest, the pioneer of RPGs. Without Dragon Quest, we wouldn't even have some of these other big RPGs that are represented in Smash, like Pokemon or Final Fantasy. Banjo-Kazooie, iconic to the N64 era of games. Specifically, the things like collectathons, 3D platformers, and even Rare as a whole, but still, you see the style of Banjo-Kazooie both in their original game and in Smash, and you'll be able to see that they represent this era very well. Fatal Fury, not only iconic to the FGC, but also this is the fighting game series that made a certain developer want to make a fighting game of his own. Who's that developer? You know, just this uh, little known developer known as uh, Masahiro Sakurai. If you haven't heard the story about him beating some guy's girlfriend who has never played Fatal Fury before, <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty funny. And again, the whole theme of icons isn't really there entirely, since we do have the outliers of Persona 5 Guy and Fire Emblem Fighter number 847. I guess Persona 5 Guy is basically now the mascot to Persona, and Persona is a pretty big series, I guess. But, I don't know. Was Persona 5 Guy this popular before Smash, or did he become this popular after he got in Smash? I, I feel like it's because of his inclusion in Smash that he's now the mascot, but I don't know. I could be completely wrong on that. But Fighter Pass 2, can you really call these characters icons? Well, considering that these two are two of them, maybe, but then these two, no. So it seems like based on what we have so far, they went a pretty different route when it came to the theme of this Fighter Pass. This one, instead of being focused on icons and new worlds, seems to be more focused on missed opportunities and new opportunities. Min Min, she missed the boat in the base game, now she's here. Steve, took five years to get greenlit. Several. The first ever unique third-party character from a series that's already represented and already has a character in the game. Before, the most that we got for characters from the same third-party franchise was just Echo Fighters, those two being Ken and Richter. But now we can have fully-fledged new characters as shown by Sephiroth. Shall I give you despair? Also, this gave the opportunity to have more Final Fantasy VII content in the game, which, you know, should have been in the base game from the beginning, but, uh, you know, make them pay for it! Pythra. Again, just like Min Min, they missed the boat for the base game, so fuck it, throw them in now. Even though ARMS and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 aren't even relevant now, but who cares, people will still buy them. <laughs> but we're not done with patterns yet. Not only patterns with the fighter pass as a whole, but patterns with the characters and their specific slots. Now yes, slots don't really mean anything in Smash, but let's just take a look at this just for fun. So let's compare the first six DLC characters to the later six DLC characters. So yes, that means I'm going to be grouping Piranha Plant with Fighter Pass 1, even though he's not Fighter Pass 1, but just roll with it. So first up, the first of both DLC packs, Piranha Plant and Min Min. Easy first party picks. I mean, think about it, of course they're going to start with something easy. That's what they did with Smash 4, they just started with a bunch of characters that were already in the franchise before, so, so you know, just make a new model and just reuse a bunch of animations and stuff. But this is not easy in that same way, it's more so easy just because, you know, they're Nintendo characters, they don't have to pay a lot to have them in, so... Yeah, that made it pretty easy to pick them. Persona 5 Guy and Steve. 
what the fuck picks. Seriously, I mean, I, I guess some people were predicting these or wanted these, but I uh, just... You can't tell me that people were like, yes, we are for sure going to get Persona in Smash. And then Steve and Minecraft in general was just something that everyone was on the fence about. Some people wanted Minecraft, some people didn't want Minecraft. Some people thought that Minecraft was likely, some people thought, this isn't getting in, fuck that. The Hero and Sephiroth. Square characters. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty weird that this actually happened. Oh, I'm I'm not talking about the, them being the third characters in their waves. No, I'm 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 talking about the fact that we got two square characters as DLC. Could Stingy Square be turning less stingy? I doubt it. Banjo and the Xenoblade Hentai Sisters, two in one characters. You got Banjo and you got Kazooie. You got Busty Redhead and you got Busty Blonde. And then of course that leaves the last two slots, which. Still, we don't know who these characters are in Fighter Pass 2, but we do know who they are in Fighter Pass 1, so we could use this for a little bit of speculation. So yeah, if you don't already know, those other two characters in Fighter Pass 1 are Terry Bogard and another fucking Fire Emblem character. Yes, f fuck, f thank you, thank you for another fucking Fire Emblem character. Wow, this is definitely what we fucking wanted. <laughs> But seriously, fuck this character. So now let's see if we could find some dumb patterns and see if we could find out who could these last two characters be based on these characters and the theme of Fighter Pass 2. First of all, Fighter 12. Or F Fighter 11. I, I don't know. The, the last DLC character. Who's it gonna be? Well, judging by the fact that uh, Fighter Pass 1 ended with a Fire Emblem character, it's gonna be another fucking Fire Emblem fucker. Look, Smash 4 half ended with a Fire Emblem character, and Fighter Pass 1 actually did end with a Fire Emblem character, so yeah, uh, this proves that we're just going to keep getting Fire Emblem characters until this game just turns into, uh, is, is there a Fire Emblem fighting game? I, I thought there was like some, no, I, I think I'm thinking about that stupid mobile app that I have no respect for. If, if you want to know why I have no respect for, it's because, uh, uh, you, you want to call this thing a respectable game with these in them? Yeah, that that's quite respectable. But yeah, that's that's no fun. So let's talk about the more fun one. Fighter number 10. Or uh, 11. I, oh, who's this going to be? Now, I kind of want to look at some of these themes that we have going on here. So, first of all, a character who could be a missed opportunity in the past or a brand new opportunity for the series. And on top of that, someone who shares something with Terry. An anime like Fighter. And another thing, I feel like this character is probably going to be another unique character from an already represented third party series. It just feels a bit weird thinking that uh, Sephiroth would be the only one to do this and he'd be thrown right in the middle of Fighter Pass 2. It would be like if Ryu was the only Smash 4 DLC character that was uh, another character from an already represented third party company. You'd be like, okay, thanks for showing this off now. This would have been more of a surprise at the end. So I feel like we're going to get at least one more. They wouldn't have this thing be a new inclusion if they weren't going to do it at least once more. Unless, of course, this was like some kind of deal that Nintendo made with Square where they were like, hey, uh, we want people to buy Cloud again. And they're like, no, he's already in the series. He, why, why would they have to pay for him again? How about, how about we compromise by having uh, Sephiroth as a DLC character later down along the line? And then we can uh, have people pay for Sephiroth and also the Final Fantasy VII content that should have been in the game, like the spirits and actual music. So, I mean, if, if that's the case, then I actually have no idea if we'll actually get another character like this, where it's a unique character from an already represented third-party series. But, uh, I don't know, Let, let's, let's stick with this idea. So... Representing a series that's already represented, but brings in a unique character. Someone similar to Terry, based on them being in a lot of fighting games and having anime-like style fighting abilities and, and shit. Missed the boat in the past and could offer new opportunities in the future. I see one character who could take this spot. That being... Goku. Now hear me out, hear me out. He's in a lot of fighting games, like Terry. He's got very anime powers and martial arts. He couldn't be in before because he wasn't a video game character, but hey, if we could get Sephiroth, who fucking knows who else we could get? Get Goku in Smash, get Batman in Smash, get Ben 10 in Smash, please. That that last one, I would, I would fucking love that if they did it right. And also, this is another unique character from an already represented third party series, that being Dragon Quest. Now you might be thinking, Dragon Quest and Dragon Ball are not the same thing. But basically, think about it. It's like Mario and Donkey Kong. 
they're in the same universe, pretty much. I mean, look at the characters. All the heroes in Smash are basically just Dragon Ball characters, just repurposed, redesigned to look like they are unique characters, but, I mean, they're, they're still Dragon Ball characters at heart, so, yeah. On one side of the globe, we've got all the, all the Dragon Quest heroes doing whatever the fuck they do. I have no idea. I don't play Dragon Quest. And the other side of the world, we have Goku. And hey, you might be like, oh, but we've already got a spirit board for Dragon Quest. Well, pfft. We don't have one for, for these specific characters in Dragon Ball, so that'll work. Besides, who cares? We have a fucking Fire Emblem spirit board. And there's also spirit boards for ARMS and Final Fantasy and Xenoblade, which are already represented beforehand. Well, not Final Fantasy with spirits, but whatever. So yes, these last two characters have to be, without a doubt, Goku and another disappointment. This is very serious speculation. I uh, I know that these are going to be all the correct answers. If you want to disagree with me, go ahead. It's not going to change my mind, bitch.